Well guys, it's a bit of a slower day here in Phoenix resale land, uh, so I thought I would take this opportunity to answer a few specifically FBA questions that I get most often, starting off with how to prep handheld consoles. Um, I did a video on like normal consoles a while back, but I thought I'd show you guys what I do for these as well. Uh, and also try to answer some of the other questions that I get asked most often about my FBA process. So the first step is cleaning and testing the consoles. Um, it's not a super involved process to be honest with um, handhelds just because pretty much all I use is Goo Gone to like get off sticker gunk or like grime um, and then some Clorox wipes just to um, you know get them looking nice. You can see this guy is in really nice shape. I'm already done cleaning him and everything so uh, then I'll move on to testing. And what I'll do for that is turn the system on, obviously, while I'm waiting for it to boot up, I'll actually plug it in and check out the um, little charging bulb there and make sure that it's on, it's steady, it's not flickering, um, to make sure that it can receive a charge well. I'll just mess around with some buttons on the home screen here, make sure everybody seems, uh, you know, all the buttons seem kosher and working. Then the last thing I'll do is just pop a game in there and uh, look at the home menu, make sure that it is reading the game. You can see that it is Mario and Luigi Dream Team. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as testing goes. I don't go super in depth. I don't play the games for any extended amount of time uh, just because I found if it's reading it well, usually there aren't any issues uh, past the home screen. So as far as grading goes, I get some questions about grading sometimes uh, from acceptable, good, very good, like new. I almost never list stuff as like new unless it has all of the original packaging and everything and it's just in really great shape. And at that point I might even go on eBay so I don't find myself listing stuff as like new on Amazon, uh, at least as far as video games go, almost ever. Um, but to use this as an example, this is a great example of a very good console. You can see if it catches the light, there are a couple very minor flaws on here. It's not completely perfect, but I would say it's very good as long as the flaws are very minor. Uh, you can see on the inside, it almost looks like new to be honest. Uh, so that gives me confidence in listing this as very good. This is not very good. This is the same console, but you can see when the light catches it, it's got a good amount of flaws. Uh, it looks like it's been like scraped somehow, like on the ground. Um, even though the inside does look really good as well, uh, this I would list honestly as acceptable. I could see some people maybe listing this as good, but uh, honestly, this uh, is so physically flawed, even though it's working perfectly. I'm gonna list it as acceptable just because I wouldn't feel good sending that out the door as good condition. Anytime I'm on the fence, I always follow the motto of under promise and over deliver. Um, so I'll always err on the side of caution with my gradings. If I'm ever on the fence, I'll downgrade rather than upgrade. So once it's all cleaned and tested, then you're ready to finally pack it up. Uh, I don't use a ton of supplies for packing. You'll need uh, some bubble wrap squares, some uh, normal scotch tape, and then I use six by nine inch poly bags. They do need to have the suffocation warning on there for FBA. And then basically all I'll do is I'll wrap it up in a diamond shape here. Use a piece of tape there. Then I'll bring the other corners in. Tape it up. And that's pretty much what it'll look like. Notice I didn't forget the stylus. I always have replacement ones of those on hand. Then I'll take it and stuff it in the poly bag here. And the last step is you never want to forget your charger. I also have a whole bunch of these. And I can't tell you the number of times that I have sealed up the poly bag without the charger in it. Take that guy off, and now you're pretty good to go. So this just provides a little layer of uh, protect protection if this was ever uh, dropped or it's jostling around in shipping. You could go for two squares 
of this, and I've done that before if that makes you feel more confident. Uh, right now I'm just doing one, and this is ready for, uh, I would put the FBA label right here, and it would be ready to be sent out in a batch. Another question I get quite often is how I process and send off my disc-only games. I talk about disc-only games all the time, pick them up a lot from pawn shops, and the simple answer is I throw them in an empty case. I always try to pick these up at yard sales or sometimes I'll get them online. Um, but yeah, throw them in an empty case, slap a label on the back, and they're good to go that way. I personally would not just put them in a, uh, in a poly bag like this. Um, that just is not, uh, doesn't give me the peace of mind that I really need. Maybe if you bubble wrapped it, that could be a workaround but I prefer always sending them in a case like this or a jewel case, like a CD case, something to keep it nice and protected that's a little bit harder. The only exception to that would be um, my DS games. So what I do with those is I, I am not able to find enough empty cases of those that I can just have them on hand because I buy a good number of loose DS games. So those I'll just put, because they're not as easily damaged, in a little Ziploc bag. These are 3 inch by 4 inches. I'll slap a label on the back. They're just the right size. And I haven't had any issues till this point um, sending them in like this. So that's how I do those. All right, I'm going to take a look at some of the FBA questions specifically I've gotten on YouTube and Instagram now. Um, so the tripod, the camera's a little bit... Uh, high up right now, kind of awkwardly so, but this is the only tripod I have, so uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna roll with it. This person asks, I'm curious, do you ever sell the system by itself, mostly just cables, no controllers, or games? For example, I have a PS2 I'm cleaning, looking to sell. Uh, I'll only have enough to pick up cables, no games to really test or controllers to use. Okay, so there are kind of two different answers here. Uh, the first one is that on Amazon, there are listings for some consoles for consoles only. Um, so I know, for example, there's one for Wii's that's just the console, no cords, no games, no controllers, no nothing that you can uh, send just raw consoles into. However, I wouldn't do that if you haven't tested it. If it's untested, I actually would sell it on eBay. Um, you can throw in whatever you have with it. It doesn't have to be standardized at all that way. And you can list it as untested. That way you don't have to worry if somebody gets it, they have a game, they put it in, and it doesn't work about returns. You're going to get less for it that way, but uh, you know it's more likely that the customer will have a positive experience if you're not able to test it on your own. How can I get ungated in Nintendo? So this is a tricky one. I actually did not have to apply to get ungated. I've been selling on Amazon for long enough that it was automatic for me. That said, uh, I believe there are two ways that you can do it. One is to have a high enough number of items sold that you can get auto approved when you apply. I'm not sure what that threshold is. I know people have had luck in other categories at 2000 individual sales. Um, but I'm not sure what that number exactly might be for Nintendo. The other way to get ungated in categories in general is to submit invoices from distributors. So you buy 10 or more of a product from a distributor, you show Amazon the invoice from that that's like at least uh, from the last six months or so, um, and you submit that to them and then you can get approved that way. An example of a uh, distributor might be um, Alliance Entertainment. I've heard people have had success with that one. Um, but again, I don't have any personal experience with that. So take all that with a little bit of a grain of salt. Have you ever had any issues selling used games and gaming systems on Amazon? Uh, yes, all the time. Um, I personally don't test all of my games personally. Uh, I know there are a lot of people who do. If you're doing lower volume, I definitely recommend that you do that. Um, but when I'm sending in shipments of hundreds of games, sometimes I'll look at a game and it seems like it's going to work and then people uh, will, you know, plug it in and it doesn't work. So I get returns that way. I get returns from people who just changed their mind or uh, who are looking to take advantage of the system. Uh, I have consoles that get returned. I have, I've had people return things that are not what they bought before. So yes, there are plenty of issues that uh, go along with selling on Amazon that you do have to be prepared for. Um, the good news is their seller support is, uh, while it can be difficult sometimes to navigate and a little bit tedious, I haven't had any experiences where I've been taken advantage of and they haven't helped me out and made it right. 
So all that said, yes, there are issues, but there also are solutions. What does BOLO stand for? Yeah, I probably should make that a little bit clearer. BOLO stands for be on the lookout. It's just an item that is good to look for that uh, will have potential to sell for everybody. Do you test each of the games or does pawn shops test all the games before they sell them? Um, I just mentioned whether or not I test them all. I will test all the ones that look kind of suspect with scratching. I guarantee almost every pawn shop will not test every game. So don't rely on them to uh, sell only games that are working. How is selling the Kinect sensors going? Okay, so that's in reference to a uh, pickup that I had of about 20 of them on a single resale ride back in uh, Indiana a few weeks ago. And uh, it's a great question. I think I've sold like three or four of them. They're selling, I'd say fairly quickly, maybe one every week or two. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. They're bringing after fees around like 20 to $23. So can't complain. Do you ever buy Wii systems? Yes, I buy Wiis all the time. I don't know, you might be able to see back there. Got a little stack of them uh, back there right now. But yeah, I do buy Wiis. I buy them for around $20, uh, you know, 15 to 25, give or take. And uh, normally they'll sell if you bundle them with Wii Sports or Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort for 60 plus after fees. Do you ever get nervous when going into pawn shops? That uh, is a good question. I think pawn shops can make people a little bit nervous. You're, they're usually not in the best part of town. Um, sometimes can be kind of run down. They've got bars on the windows. The worst experience I've ever had in a pawn shop was just bad service. Like sometimes it'll be really slow or sometimes people will be rude. But in reality, that's not worse than, you know, like a Walmart. So I always have a lot of confidence going into pawn shops. Uh, I would encourage you to try it out. The only other thing that I could see making somebody nervous would be like the negotiation side. If you're really not comfortable with negotiation, I don't know. There are definitely still deals to be had at pawn shops if you're willing to be patient, sort through all the games, find the ones that are most underpriced, usually for older systems. Um, but if you're not comfortable at all with negotiating, it'll be harder to buy like systems or newer games uh, just because Oftentimes when I'm buying those, I'll be buying a good number and so I can negotiate a good discount on it and that's how I'm able to pick stuff up. So I would definitely encourage you to try it out. I've had a few people messaging me recently saying that they walked into one and they were able to find like a PlayStation 3 Move controller or like some underpriced games and stuff like that. So there's definitely money to be made uh, if you end up finding that it's something you like. And if not, no big deal. Well guys, I think that will do it for this video. Thanks as always for watching and thank you for engaging and giving me all those questions. I love going back and forth with you guys. If you have more questions, please let me know. Uh, subscribe if you hadn't already. And until next time, I will catch you guys on the flip.